Martin has done it! It's a fantastic save! Unbelievable! The stuff dreams are made of! Speaking football. Hello and welcome to episode number 95 of Speaking Football. Uh, those of you joining us on Twitch, welcome. Welcome wherever you are in the world and please write to us, same as last week, write to us any messages that you want, ask us anything you like about football, again about shampoo, any kind of topic you want to ask us about, about food, gastronomy, the arts, anything, ask us in the Twitch screen. We'll try to keep it to football as much as possible. Hello Kublai Khan, long time no see, long time no see, guanto tiempo. Uh, those of us joining, uh, those of you joining us at home as well, um, I hope that you enjoyed the listening to Richard over the last uh, half hour or so. Remember, you can listen to more from Richard after the show, directly after the show for the next half hour on La Hora Extra. So stick around for that. Uh, lots of interesting things to talk uh, about today. We're going to be going to London for our footballing cliche of the day. Uh, and in the second half of the show, Ruben and I will be challenging each other with our linguistic uh, challenge, which Ruben vanquished me. Last week, he was the current, the reigning champion. Yeah, I didn't tell you where we are going to go. That's it. You didn't tell we me what? We are going to do to, to flight. We're going to fly yes, today. Yes, you know where? I think you said to me yesterday, but I've forgotten. We're, there's one Spanish one, no? Yeah, and then we go to Ecuador. Ecuador. Oh, a good country. I don't think we've yeah. had an Ecuadorian one before, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to traveling to Ecuador. I think we're going to be in, in the United Kingdom, in England specifically, for uh, our little test. Um, so we've got that to look forward to in our section that we call Juego de Palabras, Play Onwards. Uh, and we're also going to be, as we said, going to London for a footballing cliche of the day as well. So a very English uh, show today, mm -hmm. despite my a pesar de, uh, despite my presence. Uh, it's going to be a very <laughs> English uh, show. First though, let's begin the programme, as always, by revealing the identity of last week's mystery player. Yes. Mystery player. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Let's go. Clue number one, please. Clue number ben. one. Clue number he one. played in England, France, Spain, and China. Very good. And I managed to get the clues correct this week. The last couple of weeks, I've been absolutely terrible with the clues. I've been translating the wrong countries and everything like that. But no, I managed <laughs> to do it well this week. So, yes, he played in England, France, Spain, and China. Uh, clue number two, he scored more goals than any other foreign player for one La Liga team, one specific La Liga team. And one... Team in La Liga who won once the Liga. <laughs> yes, who won once the Liga in 1940. A lot of years ago, yeah. Six, I'm going to guess. I think it was 1946. Maybe this year has chances. It's going to be them or Real Madrid. Yeah. Um, I would like to see. I'm going to, I'm going to um, show my colours here. I would like to see Sevilla win the league this year. Yeah. I would like to see that. But a bit of difference. Variety, la variedad. The variety is, is something that I like in life. You know, mm -hmm. having a bit of variety. So it'd be nice to see uh, this, this team win. And we've just said the team, Sevilla, okay? So he played for Sevilla, uh, this guy. And for Sevilla, he scored more goals than any other foreign player uh, in that team. Uh, clue number three, that's an interesting one, Bruin. Yes, his name translates as Amado. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Loved Amado. one. Loved one, yeah. So like ser querido or Amado would be like a loved one is what we would say. Uh, and this, uh, his name translates as, as loved one in a language of Mali, where I believe his family are from. Um, another little clue, he's French, but mm -hmm. obviously his origins, his family origins, are from Mali. Uh, clue number four, he won two UEFA Cups, UEFA Cups, and he won two Copa del Rey trophies as well. So a good a good tournament player, a very successful tournament Not career. Not bad at all. Not bad. Better than me anyway. Uh, and <laughs> uh, clue number five, uh, Ruin. He is 122 centimetres, Tall. Oh, 22 or 92? 92. I say 22? No, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. 192 centimetres tall. Very good. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Tall guy. Very, very tall very guy. Very tall. Uh, who was our mystery player? Yeah. I mean. Our mystery player was... Canute. 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 You, can, you have to pronounce Canute. We, in, in... in Spain, we say Canute. Canute. I think it probably is Canute because there's a, a little accent on the last E. Mm. But we, I, I remember hearing the English commentators when I was growing up when he played for West Ham, as you can see in the photo, yeah. um, saying that he, they used to say Freddie Canute. 
Canute. I don't think that's a correct pronunciation. They also. Freddy's Canute. Yeah, you should hear them trying to pronounce Aspilicueta. They don't do a very good job of that either. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a, a lot of um, questionable pronunciation in, from English commentators. Uh, really, really good. Um, winners this week. Ruben. Yes, for example, Ruben Fandiari, CBP. También acertó. Mauro, que dice, exacto, from Mali. Pero no ha dicho el nombre, pero sabe que sí. Mm -hmm. Javi Sanz que dice, that's easy. Frederick Canete, hope I spelled properly. <laughs> And Underweg también lo acertó. Luis María Vistosini dijo, it seemed to me that it's Henri. It's Henri. It's very, in the photo, in Twitter, the movement mm, could be Henri. Eh? That's, could yeah, be, that, could that, be. yeah, could be. Just that, that opening, opening his body and passing it into the goal, yeah. it does, it looks very like Henri. Br Bruno no. Martín dice, el mejor jugador de la historia del Sevilla, Canuté. JR Barbacho dice, this time I don't, I don't have any idea of who is him. <laughs> of who he is, I would say. Of okay. who he is. Who he is, Macho, exactly. Bruno. Yeah, yeah, very good. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we've got another message uh, from Jose Ramon, as always, in La Valdu Show. This week's mystery player wasn't that easy. Only a single word took me to the right answer right away. I was lucky, I think. This footballer got two yellow cards and consequently a red one in a match with Barcelona as he kicked away Messi's ball after he placed it on the penalty spot. I remember that. I still remember <laughs> it. So he placed it in the penalty spot, ready to take a penalty, and Canote kicked the ball away. And he received the second yellow card and he was consequently sent off. Later on, he also had a big argument with Fabregas and he received the second card. Uh, but playing in Sevilla... Interesting, Jorge Ramon has said Seville. Now, Seville in English is the city. The city. But if we're talking about the team... Sevilla and it's plural. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to say Seville is a beautiful place, uh -huh. but Sevilla Football Club are very good team. Yeah, very are a very good team. Are are very important or something like that. Yeah, we would say that. Or Betis are very important. Sevilla are very important. But we do it with some cities. Naples as well. We say Naples for the city and Napoli for the team. So yeah. that's what we do. And we do the same with um with Sevilla. Playing in Sevilla, he scored over 130 goals in almost 300 games that he participated in. I am referring to Canute. If I'm wrong, don't mention my name, please. No, you're not wrong. You're correct. So don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so over there, I'm on. Um, really, really good. Good participation as well. Um, Kublai Khan's written to us here saying, uh, how are you both doing? We're doing very, very well. I'm sorry to say that Sevilla is unlikely to become champion. Very pessimistic, Kublai. I don't know. <laughs> I think you have to be optimistic uh, in life. Well, thank you to everybody who took part. I think you did really, really well there. A good uh, reaction and lots of great football minds, I think, with yeah. us today. Now, it's on to our first section of today's programme, which is, of course, our football cliché of the day. Please start on the front foot. You know, you know the is. Cliché of the day. Very good. I still love that little intro with the John McGinn, Roy Keane and Arteta with their <laughs> cliches. Um, now, interesting one. We were in Manchester last week and this week we're going precisely 376 kilometres south of Manchester to a place called Croydon. Now, I mentioned it briefly in the in the intro. Where is Croydon? Do you know what city of England is Croydon in? I never heard. Never heard of Croydon. No? Crystal Palace is the team from Croydon. Ah, so Crystal Palace. That's it. So it's in the bo it's the, the in the most southern um, municipio. We would say borough. Mm -hmm. Borough. Think of Middlesbrough, mm -hmm. or that's idea. That's idea. B o r o u g h. That's like municipio in London. Mm -hmm. So it's the most southern. Borough, like Middlesbrough. Like Middlesbrough. Yeah, that's it. Middlesbrough. That's it. Uh, municipio. It's the most southern borough of London is uh, Croydon, right at the bottom of London, and that's where Crystal Palace play. So mm. the name is, is Croydon of the place. So we're going 376 kilometres south of Manchester to Croydon, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to see what's happening at Crystal Palace. We've got a great cliche here from the Independent newspaper. Patrick Vieira urges out-of-form Crystal Palace to bounce back. Bounce back. Bounce back as soon as possible. Now, I always hear footballers using this. It's expression. like um, to recop rec recuperarse. Recuperarse. Yeah, what does it literally mean? To bounce. bounce is botar. That's what you do in basketball. Y back is que vuelve, ¿no? Bota, bota para atrás. Botar Volver para atrás. atrás ¿no? <laughs> Recuperarse como estábamos antes. That's ¿no? it. Yeah, botar or rebotar. Rebotar. Uh, in English would be to bounce. And to bounce back is this idea, yeah, of like to recover. Yeah, to recover, mm -hmm. recuperarse, recuperarse, to bounce back. And we use it ¿Y all the time. ¿Y lo puedes decir en cualquier contexto? 
Si I te, would, si estás en el hospital, are you okay? Yes, I bounce back. I'm bouncing yeah. back. I'm bouncing back. I'm bouncing so. back. Yeah, I'm bouncing back be... from my injury and my illness. Yeah. Why Me gusta not? bounce back. Bounce back. Yeah, bounce and back. it's it's good if you like basketball as well. It's very easy to remember because mm -hmm. do you say in Spanish? For, I I know nothing about basketball in Spanish mm -hmm. or in English actually for that fact. But um, would you say to bounce the ball, botar? Botar or, la pelota. Botar la pelota. Okay. There to we bounce go. the ball. To bounce the ball and to bounce back is recuperarse. Tú en español puedes botar la pelota o botar en las elecciones. Eh. Una es con B y otra con V. That's it. Ah, botar with with botar. V. To vote. To be. vote. That. Or to bounce. And do you know how to say to vote, votar a un partido? Votas a un partido mm -hmm. o un candidato. How would you say that in English? To vote, people always get this one wrong. Oh, I'm going to make a mistake. You have to vote to... Um... A party? No, a party, no. I wasn't... It is a party. It is a party? It is a no party, way. yeah. A political party, oh, we would say. Yeah, yeah to, vote, to vote for a party. And that's the mistake that people make. Oh, my make. God. Yeah, Does it yeah. say party? It says you go to the party or you have... You you are a part of a party. You're a part of a party, or you're a member of a party. Yeah, you're a be member like, of a party. Yeah, that's that'll okay. be like a militant, uh, militante. I don't no? entiendo todo. That's it. Ah, uh, well, in in the case of Boris Johnson in England, it's a literal party. Yeah, yeah claro, he likes yeah, his, claro, he really normal, likes his lleva parties. Confusión, lleva confusión. <laughs> I know. I think he's confused about the translation. I think that's why he's uh, having so many parties. Anyway, back to football. Um, could we use this in a sentence, like to bounce back? Could you give me an example of like, for example, what mm -hmm. this is saying in the title? He urges out of form Crystal Palace to bounce back. First of all, out of form. Yes. What do we mean? I think it's to to do it like you did in the past. Mm -hmm. Something yep. like that. So to get back your form, to recuperate your form, form, yeah. in forma, Spanish sí. like the forma, racha. Forma, recuperar la forma. Yeah, la forma. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So t they're on a bad run, una mala racha. They're mm -hmm. on a bad run, and he wants them to recuperate the good run, to recuperate the good form yeah. uh, that they had. To so to bounce back as soon as possible. Yeah. Cuanto antes, ¿no? Yeah. Cuanto antes. Um, do you know how to say cuanto antes mejor? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. The sooner the better. The sooner the well. better. For Me sale point. mejor la otra. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. I like it as well. Um, who's out of form in Spain at the moment? Can you think of any teams who are a little bit out of form? On form? Mm. It's difficult or, or to inform. say because there is... Well, in form, there is a lot of them. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of them. I mm. thought that... Uh, Inform is Betis, for example. Yeah, exactly. Inform is Betis is, is in a win streak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, a win streak. In a good run. Mm -hmm. A great run. Fantastic. Oh, God. He's learning. He's learning yeah, very, very fast. Yeah, I learned a lot about, about to run. I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and an inform, mm, I was going to say Levante, but Levante did a very good match the other day. Well, yeah, they played a really good match against Atletico, didn't they? they? So they won, and against Celta as well. Celta, yeah. 1-1. I think yes, it was. one one. It's not bad now. That's not bad, but I think they're they're on they're in okay form. You could say. Yeah, it's very difficult to keep winning two um, two matches consecutive. It's, it's difficult. difficult right? It's difficult to win consecutive matches when you're at the bottom of the table. When you are rock bottom, colista. When you're rock bottom, rock bottom. The sweeper. <laughs> when you, the nosotros sweeper. decimos nosotros decimos el colista, el farolillo rojo. Farolillo rojo. Coche escoba. El ah. último. That's amazing. Esto lo he dicho, el super. So like the... El coche escoba, sí, coche sí, escoba. sí. El coche escoba ah, es el último. En ciclismo, sobre todo. Yeah. En fútbol dice farolillo rojo más. Farolillo rojo. Pero el ah, coche escoba okay. es el último. I've seen colista quite a lot. Um, I've seen it quite a lot in the, in, the, in the past in newspaper articles and things like that, to be colista. En inglés, we said to be rock bottom. So imagine rock like piedra. Yeah. And bottom like, well... Yeah, the bat. Yeah, the butt. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, the, the butt. Now, there's no the nice, butt. there's no non-vulgar way to say it. To be rock bottom is what we say to be colista. Mm -hmm. So if you're rock bottom, normally you're in bad form. You're not in good form. Uh, and Crystal Palace are hoping to bounce back and to get their, their form back, yeah. to recuperate their form. Kublai Khan says, Patricio Scallop apremia un palacio de cristal fuera de forma a recuperarse cuanto antes. <laughs> <laughs> Patricio Scallop. Yeah, so Scallop is a vieira. If you go to a Galician restaurant... Una vieira is, is a clam. It's a big a, clam. It's a big, big clam. Yeah. And if you go to... <laughs> Patricio Scallop. If you go to a Galician <laughs> restaurant, it's true. Vieira. Oh, yeah. That must look very strange for you. Pa Patricio... Patricio Vieira. Yeah, it's really, really strange. Yeah, Patrick Scallop. Um, Palacio de Cristal, Crystal Palace. It's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Yep. Las Aguilas, the Eagles. Yeah. They don't know. They haven't 
yeah, they haven't known, no conocen la victoria en seis partidos de la Premier. Yeah, they haven't won in six games. So, Oof. tremendous word for word uh, translation by Kublai Khan. Eh, fa Farun, is that? Sí, dice que farolillo rojo es because the train has always a red light on the last wagon, mm -hmm. so they, uh, pues, can, you can see um, in the station if the mm -hmm. train had lost one or more wagons. Ah, okay, so one of the wagons, one of the cars, sí. we can sí, see the cars. Sí, la luz well. roja al final es el último, entonces farolillo rojo se ponía detrás. Y por right. eso se dice, en ciclismo es muy común. Ah, uh, okay, that's it. Very interesting. Good, we've got a, a very. Cultured. Thank you very much, Farron. Yeah, son todos muy cultos. They're all yeah. very, very cultured people, yeah. our, our listeners. They know lots of things. Well, fantastic. Now, it's once again that time of the week where Rowena and I test each other's skill as language learners, as linguists, with a little game that we call Play on Words. Play on Words. That's my hand shaking through through nerves because I've had a terrible record. I'm not informing this at all. I'm on a bad run with this. <laughs> I, I won two weeks ago, but Ruben is once again the reigning champion. Can you very quickly explain this little game, just in well, case people are joining it's us easy, for the first but time? But we are going to introduce you new words, expressions, English expression, or Spanish expression, wherever. Mm -hmm. Could be Spain, Latin America, Latin America, and Tommy, same. You can bring I'm, whatever you want. I'm a little bit more limited because uh, English-speaking countries, I don't really know much about what they say in America for for football, for yeah. soccer, because it's not a very popular sport over there. So I don't really know about it too much. So I'm usually a little bit limited to England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, that kind of thing. Yeah. You can, um, but yeah, you can find out if there is something in especially in Australia, mm -hmm. or even you want to bring something from Germany from yeah, yeah. Whatever, I'm, you I'm not really confident. I do have a friend from Holland, and I've been meaning to ask him like from some Dutch well, expressions. But yeah, I'll, maybe, maybe next week I'll get a few Dutch expressions. So anyway, <laughs> yes, basically, Ruben and I are going to test each other on linguistic expressions from mm -hmm. different languages. Yeah, we are going to learn together. Mm -hmm. That's, That's the reason of the game. That's it. We're going to learn together, and I always learn something, even even if I lose, I learn something. So <laughs> that's what I say to all my students: Don't worry if you make a mistake. Actually, making mistakes is good. It's positive. It teaches you lots of things. So okay. it's definitely a good thing. Do you want to start? Yeah, uh, you well, can give me a little. Yeah, you have your your paper. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to start today. Okay. And we are going to do with a with a Spanish expression. A Spanish expression. A Spanish word, really. Okay. But okay, we are going to show to you is <laughs> chicharro. Chicharro. Okay, now I know. Beautiful, what I... beautiful, beautiful picture. Right? Yeah. Because in the picture you can see a kind of fish. Mm -hmm. In England, it's a horse. Mackerel? Mackerel, yes. Yeah. So mackerel is caballa. 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 Do you go to the fish market? I, I love the fish market. Okay, so you're going to know that. So I'm, I'm good about fish. I'm, I, honestly, my fish vocabulary is not bad. Yeah. Un, un chicharro es un tipo de pez, llamado okay. horse mackerel. But it's just a way to say something in football. Okay, a horse mackerel. Un chicharro. Chicharro. Now, uh, Nacho lo sabe. He knows Nacho it already. Lo sabe. Nacho, Dice que sí. Na Nacho Nacho's lo loving sabe. it. Nacho's loving it. I think he knows this one uh, very well. So chicharro. Um, okay. Now, usually, if you describe somebody as an animal, it's almost never a positive thing in English. That's the case in English. If you mm -hmm. describe somebody as like a donkey, for example, un burro, it means that they're inutile. It means that they're rubbish. Yeah, they're not very <laughs> okay, good at okay. their job. Do you know a lot about the chicharro personalities? <laughs> no, I don't know what they're like. <laughs> Have you ever talked with a chicharro? I've never once spoken with a with a a, a chicharro with a horse mackerel. No, I've never. My experience of <laughs> conversation with these animals is very limited. So, <laughs> have you spent a lot of time with your head under the water? No. Um, watching what chicharro was doing? No, I have very se I have very sensitive <laughs> eyes. So when I go swimming in the sea, I have to be careful not to okay. get my eyes uh, wet. So no, I, I'm very very limited. And the ones that I in interact with. The ones that I interact with at the fish market are are usually dead. Okay, they're usually not alive. So that's that's part <laughs> of the problem. They're not they're not saying very much there. So chicharro on the pitch. Do you know is it something to do with a the personality then? It's not to do with ability, it's more personality. No. Okay. No, so you can say that a, a player is a chicharro. Is a chicharro. No. Okay. Is it a negative thing? No. Not necessarily. No, not okay. That's a negative thing. Could you use it in a sentence? Yes, I'm going to use my favorite uh, sentence in English. Okay. It's very easy because you can use it whatever. Okay. Es el what a chicharro. Oh, 
By a ¡Qué chicharro. chicharro! ¡Qué chicharro! Pero you can say, for example, forever. It's a great movie. What a movie! Mm -hmm. It's a great whatever. What a... I love to say that because yeah. it's in an easy way. If you don't, you don't know a lot of levels speaking English, yeah. you always can say, what a whatever. What a... Uh, what a program! Yeah. Que yeah. or vaya. You can always say, sí. what a program, what a movie, or... Vaya lo que sea. What a y lo que queráis. Right. Y, y, and you can uh, speak in an English conversation. Yeah. What a mmm, what a snack. <laughs> oh, mmm, what a, what what a chicken. Oh, that's great. What a... Yeah, what a... Or que vaya tonto. What an idiot. You what know? an idiot. What a stupid guy. Yeah, What exactly. a stupid guy. But I'm going to say, what a chicharro. O sea, vaya, vaya chicharro. Vaya chicharro. And it, is it a person? It's not a person. Yeah, it can't, be, it, person. it can't be a person. It has to be like a movement or something like that. No, it has to be something that somebody does. No? It's something... It's something is 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 a... Um, situation mm -hmm. in in a game. Something happened is that. Mm. Mm. And it's not necessarily a negative. No negative. It's positive. Ah, is it something to do with like una jugada, like a play, a type of play? It's not a kind, a kind of play. Okay. Is it something to do with like a, a style? No, 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 it's not a style. Jesus. There's not a, a, a player are playing like a chicharro. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's not necessarily negative, so it's like... No, negative. Very positive. Very positive. Very thing. positive. Hey, chicharro. Uh, oh, mm. is it... But it's not something that somebody does and it's not a play. Is it like... Some, a, no, some, something. Uh, does some, does, uh, some, someone does something mm -hmm. and it's that. You know what's annoying? I, I've definitely heard this on the television. Yeah, well, maybe. I hear it all the time. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, not just saying... ¿Cómo se dice sentir? ¿Cómo se dice sentir? Yeah, eh, nodding. He's nodding. No, nodding. Like, nodding. He's nodding. That's absolutely terrible. I hear it all the time. Is that, it's true. I hear it on the television. Vaya chicharro. And I don't know what it Vaya is. Vaya chicharro. Um, I'm going to have to stick my neck out. You know, I'm going to have to <laughs> stick my neck out. I don't know how we'd say that in Spanish. To to go for it. Yeah, to atreverse. atreverse. To, to, to dare. I'm going to have to dare. Um, is, it, is it when you're attacking really well? Yeah, if you are attacking very well, and uh, maybe the consequence could be a chance. More than a chance. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to I'm going to tell you. A more than a chance. More than a chance. A goal. Yeah, it's a goal. Oh. <laughs> Vaya chicharro. Vaya chicharro. That's when I've heard it. Es un gol. That's Vaya gol. It after Vaya a goal. Es un gol, un gran gol. Vaya chicharro. Que a me veces me deja la puerta abierta. Sometimes he opens the door for me and it's <laughs> too obvious. Now it's not a gate. It was a door. It was a big gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a big gate. Yeah, it was a big, wide, open, open, open <laughs> gate. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a goal. Vaya chicharro. Exactly. Yeah, chicharro, I've heard yes. it. The, tra the translation in English would be horse mackler. <laughs> and... Es un chicharro, es a way to say goal, a That's great it. goal. It's all coming back to me now, yeah, un golazo. Un golazo, un golazo a yeah. chicharro. Vaya chicharro marcado, whatever. In Scotland, there's a really good word that you can say, which is belter, B-E-L-T-E-R, belter, mm. which means a belter of a goal. The belter. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's definitely a positive thing. Uh, do we have time before the break or to, to introduce a word? Or, yeah, okay, we'll introduce uh, my word for today. I don't know where to start. Whatever you want. I'm going to start with this one, Okay. And okay. it is to be okay. up, up, up. To, to be, be the whipping boys. Very good. To be the whipping boys. Okay. It's one of my favorite expressions in English. Okay. A boy, everybody knows what a boy is. Yes. And whippy, whippy is... Yes. Eh, it's latigo. Azote, yeah, or latigo. Whip is latigo. Whipping is dar latigazos. That's it. Yeah. Sería dar latigazos a los niños. O un niño que da latigazos. So to be the whipping boy. So it's it said it... Said, well... I think it, there's a clue, there's a clue here that it's in plural. So what do we always have in plural in English? Ah, oh, you, it, is, it changes everything. I even thought it's plural. <laughs> so it's not so, a whipping boy. It, you would never see it to be a whipping eso boy. No es un niño atado, son como, es como un concepto. Es como azotando, azotar a los niños. Es como un... Eso suena fatal. Suena that, fatal. Sounds, that sounds terrible. That sounds absolutely terrible. Suena fatal. We don't condone but, but whipping then, boys. You have, you have to give me a sentence. Oh, no. Okay, so, for example, um, they are the whipping boys at the moment. Or they're currently they are, the whipping okay, boys. Okay, so it's a way, it's, it's a situation. O sea, son, los, son los niños azotados. Son los niños azotados. Los niños azotados, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Why do you know the the why the origin? The origin. I do know the origin. Could be a, a historic origin. There's a historic origin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in a way of the story, there were kids or mm. boys. Uh -huh. They've been whipping. Uh huh. They've been whipping. Yeah. Um, porque serían malos. Ah, no, not necessarily. But this no is going to confuse malos. you. No, pero but... alguien tiene que ser malo. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ah, ah, vale. Do you know the story? I know something very... It's British, I think. I don't think they did it. It's, it's, yes, yes. I I, hay, un libro, hay un libro en España que creo que se tradujo de otra manera, sí, pero que contaba la historia. It was a story about uh -huh. uh, kids uh -huh. that been weeping for... And I am going to tell you After, After the that. break. After the break. I think Ruben is on the right track. He's on the right track. Yeah. We're, we're going to take a quick five minute break and then we're going to reveal the meaning of to be the whipping boys. Stick around. We're talking about to be the whipping boys. Right. And I was thinking that, hmm? oh, I, I told you something that I, I'm going the, in the right way. Uh -huh. I remember a story about a book, I don't remember the name, a lot of years ago, that mm -hmm. there were kids, mm -hmm. boys, they, they were weeping mm -hmm. when the king of the, the, the child of the king, the, mm -hmm. the princess, yeah. do something wrong. Yep. It's a way to, like if he was going to be a king, he mm -hmm. can be whipped. Whipped, exactly, exactly. So these kids, these boys, was the kids that they were whipping. Yeah, okay. basically, I, the, 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 okay. exactly. That's so the, there's a, there's a historical um, side to this, which is uh, effectively, I believe it was the kings of England or the members of the royal family in England when they were at school, if the kings or the princes or whatever, the future kings, the princes, if they misbehaved, if they si se portaban mal, mal comportamiento. Yeah, if they misbehaved, um, they were normally children were whipped back in those days. But you can't whip a prince. Sí. You can't whip a future king. So there were boys <laughs> los, who were... Sí, los que tenían allí con ellos viviendo, que eran los que recibían los latinazos. Their function was, Algo muy normal. Their function was to be whipped, basically, vale. as, like a, as a consequence. And in theory, it would asustar, it would scare the princes into behaving well, because you don't want to see your friends being whipped. No. So as Kublai says in the comments, it's a person who is blamed or punished for the faults or incompetence of others. I may end up as a whipping boy if things go wrong. That's a good, yeah, a good expression. Yeah, I, I was thinking like about this case, like they were like a scapegoat. A scapegoat. No? Okay, sí, cabeza de turco. Eran cabezas de turco. Okay. Básicamente recibían los golpes que iba a recibir el hijo del rey. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Now you're, you're no, going entonces, down, you're going down tú, a logical direction. If the sentence you said was... El, ¿Cuál es la frase? Este equipo es... Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, this team or these guys are the, the whipping boys at the moment, or the whipping boys this season. Son, pues son los, los que van a perder, los perdedores, ¿no? Los, tiene un aspecto muy negativo, los perdedores, los cabezas de turco, los que todo el mundo les van a ganar. Sí, pero cabezas de, de turco no tanto. I wouldn't say they're like a scapegoat, it's just the, the worst team. Sí. The worst team in the league. The, peor, the, peor, the worst yeah. team in the league. Nacho, I think that's a point for, for Rubén. Mm. It's 1-1, 1-1. 1-1. Yes, so for example, Levante are the, the whipping boys at the moment in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, Norwich at great stages of the season in England have been the whipping boys just you know the team that loses 7-0 6-0 just el peor equipo de la liga basically mm -hmm. are the whipping boys that's it uh, yeah <laughs> Faroon was very very shocked that we that this used to happen absolutely it was a practice in England not in Scotland we're more civilized in Scotland I think England, it's very but... interesting story yeah wow it's, it's really incredible I, no I don't think they do it anymore but Yeah, if you go to go to Wikipedia and type in Whipping Boy and you'll see the, the complete uh, story uh, of it. Really, really interesting. Okay, okay, shall we go for my one? We are going to do the second world. We are going to go Ecuador. Ecuador. We've never been there. <laughs> hey, the first time we go to Ecuador and we are going to learn a new word. Okay. And this word is... Chichecito. <laughs> no, okay. Hoy era chicharro, chichecito, todo muy con, ch con la chica. ¿Eh? Is, it, is there any relation to... ¿Qué es chichecito? Chichecito. Chichecito. Mm. Nacho, Now, do you know what chichecito is? Nacho no sabe. ¿Cómo se dice negar? Uh, he's shaking his head. Shaking so in head. English we say agitando la cabeza. Shaking his head. He's shaking his head. Ya aprendemos así that's a it. sentir y a negar con la cabeza. Yeah, that's it. A tiny... <laughs> Somebody said, Farun says, a tiny chise. <laughs> uh, well, it is true that cito, or cito, mm -hmm. as we commented last week, no, 
it's the diminutive of any word. So in the same way that in Scotland or in Ireland, we say we, W-E-E, like a wee coffee or a wee beer, una cervecita. Uh, it's true sí. that in Spain you say y, ito. Pero en Spain it's very easy that un ito, ita sean diminutivos. Pero mm. en Latinoamérica a veces no se usa así. No. I think they use it a lot, don't they? I think they use es it una a forma lot. más suave de decir las cosas. ¿eh? That's it. It just sounds, I think, uh, Latin American Spanish, it's obviously difficult to generalize, but I think it sounds softer. I think, in general, the tone is softer. It's more like... Sí, sí, sí. Eso, gentle, eso es verdad. we would say. In, in, Spain, in Spain, we speak very strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Y, and in Latin America, they speak, they are more soft talking. Yeah, I think, more I think... Careful some, sometimes. We are, we are going to get to the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. go to the point. Al grano. Very yeah. good. You go to the point. So... Yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, okay, Estás hablando de esto por desviar la atención de que no tienes ni idea de por dónde va Chichecito. I'm taking the ball and I'm running it to the corner and I'm trying to waste time. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. No, so Chichecito, you're going to have to give me an example because even the guys in the comments yeah, I have a word, sure. Mary, a great, a great sentence. Okay. And the sentence is Apareció el Ecuador del Chichecito. Imagínate que esto es un comentarista ecuatoriano. Okay. Apareció el Ecuador del Chichecito. Ok, ok. So the Ecuador, the Chichecito, or the Chichecito, Ecuador has appeared. ¿No? Sí. Has turned up. Yeah. Chichecito. And a style. Hmm. Hmm. You can have to say positive or negative. Very, very, very difficult question. Man, it doesn't make it easy for me, does it? Very difficult, but it depends on your comprehension about how you, the way you see the football. Is it a bit like uh, flipando en colores in Spanish? It can be positive or negative, it depends how you see <laughs> sí, it. Sí, bueno, sí. Yeah? Sí. Because you can say, ah, I was in Ikea the other day and I was flipando en colores. There was so much furniture. I loved it. It was great. Uh, but you could also say, ah, estoy flipando en colores, and you're very angry at somebody. Is yeah. it a bit like that? It could be no, positive or negative? No, in this way. It's like, it depends on the way you uh, see football. Do you think this kind of thing like it or not? Ah, uh, okay. So is it a particular style of play? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... Very good clue, huh? Mm, that's a very good clue. Very good style of play. So it could be like a defensive style of play, like parking the bus, or it could be an attacking style of play. I think no. I've already... Oh, no. man. No, in this way. No, in this way. So it's not like aparcar el autobús. No. Uh, it's we like, are not going to park the bus. You're not going to park the bus. It's not very easy. Uh, For you. No. Oh. That, that was it. So, chichecito. Uh, cheech. I'm looking at Cheech. What is Cheech? <laughs> Cheech. Cheech. I don't Cheech. Know. Cheech. Cheech. Well, uh, Farun says in the comments, uh, a, a small Cheech. People from Ecuador who is watching right now. <laughs> if you're watching from Ecuador, you know, you're probably going crazy with me, but understand it's a very specific word. Uh, Farun says, I have no idea about what a Cheech is. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. He's, he's making my life very difficult. Nacho, any any idea? He's shaking his head. He's he's holding his hands up, saying, "I've got no idea." So I don't feel so bad about not getting this. I don't feel so bad about not being correct here. Um, is it? I'm going to have a guess, and it's probably wrong. Is it direct play, like balón directo, balón largo? No. Okay. No. <clears throat> Oh my god! I know it was very difficult. Was really difficult. Did you know what this was before you started? No, 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 no. I find I was uh, investigating it, uh -huh. and I found that word. I say, <laughs> Tommy's not going to know it. Yeah, that's right. He's, I am very bad. He, he's got me. He's, he's he's destroyed me. Can you reveal what a chichecito is? Okay, a chichecito is alardear de más con el balón. Ah, Cuando okay. ves a Neymar que te hace un caño, te hace no sé qué, uy, el Ecuador de Chichecito es como que están jugando, tocando ahí con mucho regate, con mucha dirbe, con yeah. mucho. Es esa forma, ¿no? Chichecito es como a ver alardear jugando al fútbol. So, like, to, to be too elaborate in the play. To be sí. to over elaborate. ¿Sabes lo que diríamos nosotros en español? Yeah. Va, eh, chulearse. Chulearse. Pavonearse. We would say to show off. Show off. To show off, yeah. So, like, a, uh, if you think of like a. Well, Yeah, like like a, a pavo real, for example, a peacock mm -hmm. shows off, doesn't doesn't he? You know, he shows show off. off. Yes. Yeah, do you know off. what I'm going to do? I am going to start uh, mm. a list in Twitter uh -huh. with these three terms in Ecuador, Spain, and British. Yeah. And we are going to everybody help us to complete. Yeah. Another another country. That's good. Huh? Yeah. Keep adding your countries. How do you say chichecito, pavonearse, chulearse? 
Mm. Yeah, exactly. To show off. To show off. Yeah, exactly. To show off. It's what you do. Like, uh, I remember when we were in school and uh, if you saw that the girls were coming, you used to try to show off to say, oh, that boy's a good player. Pavonearse. We say pavonearse in this sense. Pavonearse is como andar así. Yeah. Y chulearse is como hacer cosas como mostrando superioridad. Chulearse, yeah. To show off. Yeah. To show yeah. off. And you could use it as a noun as well to be a show off. Yeah, you could mm. say Neymar's a show off. You can you can use it as well for somebody with the verb presumir. Ah, presumir. To show off as well, you could mm. say that. Yeah, he's showing off about his. Yeah, we learn a new word. That's it. Yeah, to show off. To show off. You always learn. Okay, now this is the question: Is Ruben going to win again this week? I'm going to help him out. This is my phrase. To throw the kitchen sink. Very good. To throw the kitchen a ver, sink. To throw is lanzar. Yeah, to throw. Be careful with the pronunciation. Ah, it's to, to throw. To throw, sorry. Yeah. To throw, no, no en pasado. Mm -hmm, dicho en pasado. Exactly. To throw es lanzar. Uh -huh. Kitchen es la cocina. Uh -huh. Y sink es el fregadero. Fregadero Hasta o, ahí, voy yeah, bien. Lavabo, it depends on where you are. ¿Qué significa exactamente? ¿Lanzar la cocina fuera el fregadero o lanzar el fregadero de la cocina? Yeah, lanzar el fregadero, that's what we've got. O sea, tú estás en casa uh -huh. and you, 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 you throw the, the colander You throw the pan, you throw everything, and the, the, the last thing you can throw, you can throw, is the sink. You can't throw anything else. It is the, it's impossible to throw the kitchen okay. sink. Think about so, it. How do you throw the kitchen sink? So, uh, is something the, the last thing you can throw? The last thing you can throw. Es como algo así como, como utilizar el último recurso. Utilizar el último recurso. He's on the right track For example, there. when Barcelona is playing a match and Luke de Jong in the night in the 90 <laughs> minute arrived to to hit the ball with, because a good header, yeah, is the uh, is the last uh, recurs, uh, uh, recurs, But that that would be last resort. For sure, that would be the last Como resort. El último recurso. El último recurso. That would be the, that would be to use the last resort or or utilize the last resort or or go for the last resort. To throw, to throw the kitchen sink is more like... I'm going to give him half the point. In fact, give, me, give me a sentence. Give I'm me gonna, a sentence. I'm gonna, you're on the track for half the point here. Um, okay, for example, um, they threw the kitchen sink at us in the second half. They threw the kitchen dar lo, sink at dar, us. Dar lo máximo. Dar lo máximo que puedes, ya. Yeah. yeah, it's like... Normally, it means when you're coming from a, a situation of uh, you're losing. Mm -hmm. Or... If you are, if you need a result, it's like dejarse la piel. It's like, like use like, everything. Yeah, like a, to to work uh, off. To work off, like to work, like sort of. It's just to, to throw work, everything yeah. at somebody. Yeah, to throw everything at, at something. Well, dar, darlo todo, darlo lo último que te queda. Yeah, like uh, yeah, like to work your socks off is the thing. Yes, no? Yeah, to work, socks off. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, could it be the same as rushing? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Normally, if if a team is like ten, if it has. Maybe there are 10 minutes left and they're rushing to get a result. I say they're really they're throwing the kitchen sink at them. I'm going to give Ruben the point. I'm oh. going to give it to him. Because I'm a generous man. I'm a generous man. And he's just, you have to, <laughs> well, you have to applaud. Yeah, because greatness. it was very difficult because in the first time I, I wrote it, I thought they were talking about to throw the, the, the chicken through the sink. <laughs> Algo así como tirar la casa por la ventana, que no se puede hacer. Tirar la casa por la ventana. Tirar la, tirar la cocina por el fregadero. Yeah, that's it. No, 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 no. no It's no, like to, to, throw the, to, to throw everything at somebody. It means to use all of your options, just to exhaust your options, to like agotar, you know, just to, to throw the kitchen sink. So when you are... Do you remember that game Barcelona against PSG years ago? Yeah. Uh, so when Cavani, I mm -hmm. think, scored the goal, uh, Barcelona had to throw the kitchen sink at Barcelona. They had to throw everything. They had to, like, arriesgarse. You had to take a risk. Okay? Take a risk. Huh? Yeah. There are lots of matitas. There are lots of um, sort of shades here. But mm -hmm. really, it's like, dejarlo todo en el campo. This kind mm -hmm. of idea. Leave it all on the pitch, we yeah. would say. I have once again lost. I've once again been vanquished by Ruben. 2-1 this week. There's no shame in that. 2-1. It wasn't a, it wasn't un baño. It wasn't a hammering. But uh, Trash. I, yeah. I wasn't trashed. But I was, I was beaten. <laughs> Not was... really, because Chichesito was a very difficult. Yeah, that was a really difficult one. <laughs> I think I should get actually a point just because of uh, how difficult Chichesito was. So that's it. Very good. Okay, well, uh, just in the last section of the show, it's time to have a look at what's been happening in the press this week and what's been happening in football in recent days. Uh, and that means that it's time for this week's press review. Well, well, well. 
Press Review. So we have got four articles. Notice how in formal English you can say we have, but in in formal English we say we have got. Have you noticed that before? Ah, no. We've got. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it's very difficult to know when you can use got and when not. I would just say we have got is quite informal. Okay. And we have is uh, just regular or in or or formal. Yeah, okay. but yeah, so I would say we have four articles or we've got uh, four articles here. Mm-hmm. Um where should we start? Let's start let's start with the first one. We'll start with the first uh, article which is about Manchester City. Manchester City. Okay, interesting one. So we say um there's some interesting vocabulary. Can you read the, the title there? Yes. It's... Ilke Gudogan admits Liverpool worries in Man City camp after Tottenham slip up. Very good. After Tottenham slip up. So what happened at the weekend in Manchester City? And, bueno, and... pues que Gundogan pues admite que Liverpool está preocupado por el campo de la, de, del Manchester City después de eh, haber metido la pata al Tottenham. <laughs> Ah, the sleep little, is como resbalar. ¿no? There's a little problem como here, resbalar. isn't it? Yeah. So it's nothing to do with the campo. The Man City camp is el equipo del City. Ah, madre mía, es un false friend horrible. Mm-hmm. It's a horrible Campos, false friend. No, claro, he dicho campo, pues sin yeah. pensarlo, si that, field, in, ¿no? that in itself is a bit of a sort of football cliche, because they oh. always say in the Tottenham camp, in the Real Madrid camp. Uh, so there's a lot of preocupaciones, a lot sí. of worries uh, in Manchester City after the Tottenham slip up. Now, I think slip up is a perfect way to translate pinchazo. Ah, es un pinchazo. pinchazo. Meter la pata, pinchazo, es como ver... That's it. Meter la pata es more in your personal life, isn't ah, it? Ah, claro, uh, que el Manchester City perdió con el Tottenham el yeah, otro día. Yeah, that's it. Meter la pata is, is to make a faux pas, we would say. To make a faux pas. Mm. Uh, we use a French expression, faux, falso, and paso, pa. Pa. Paso, falso. Okay, paso we say a, a faux pas. So that's in your personal life, with you meter la pata. Uh, but in football, if you want to say pinchazo, it's a slip up. Slip up. Yeah. So they had a slip up against uh, Tottenham, Manchester City, who are at the top of the league. They had a slip up, uh, un pinchazo, mm-hmm. against Tottenham. And they're now, Liverpool are back in the race and they are worried. And that's an interesting football, it's a football cliche here, in the Man City camp, uh, como si fueran soldados, as if they were soldiers, claro, claro. you know. Um, so we would say, uh, in the Man City camp, they're worried. In el equipo del City. Uh, on la, la plantilla and the squad, they are worried. Yep, very good, good, mm-hmm. good headline. Uh, number two, I like this one. Really interesting. Uh, Athletic uh, Bilbao, an incredible uh, result uh, for them in the the Basque Derby. Mm-hmm. Um, the title is Athletic Bilbao summon spirit of the Once Aldeanos <laughs> uh, <laughs> in Basque Derby <laughs> triumph. So they didn't translate Once Aldeanos. They they kept the same. Do you know the story, this idea of the Once Aldeanos? I didn't know. Well, I suppose they are from Bilbao mm-hmm. and they won a league or something like that, pl- yeah. being people from the same... That's it. The place, same area, yeah. Same city. Aldea in Spanish translates as Hamlet, like the Shakespeare play. Ah, Hamlet. Hamlet, yeah, that's mm. an aldea. Uh, but so, Al- so bil- a village is, b- is bigger than a hamlet. The hamlet, yeah, hamlets are very small. Okay. Uh, but Aldeanos, this idea that they're from the, the small area. The Once Aldeanos um, were the team that beat... Pero the... Aldeanos lo ha cogido the, the Guardian, lo ha usado en el titular. What is that? It's a Spanish word. It's a Spanish, yeah, yeah. It's because Sid Lowe wrote it. Sid Lowe is the, he's an English journalist that's, uh, <laughs> ah, that's okay, here. Okay. So it is a bit like they would say, for example, Los Invincibles, you know, ah, los for, for Arsenal. Sí, sí, sí. They say Los Invincibles sometimes. Yeah, or, they, they didn't yeah. lost the game. Yeah, yeah, that's it, like Arsenal, yeah. Or sometimes I've heard on Dazón, for example, they say Los Foxes instead of Los Zorros or, for uh, for Leicester. So, Leicester. yeah, Once Aldeanos we didn't, uh, we didn't translate. So Once Aldeanos were, the, uh, were a great, a very famous athletic... Y, y Salmon es como invo- invocar, ¿no? O llamar. Llamar. Llamar al espíritu, ¿no? Yeah, exactly. So, Salmon. So they called the spirit of, of this great team in order to win the Basque uh, derby. A triumph, victory, ¿no? Triunfo, you would say, sí. ¿no? Yeah, sí. like there's a show, Operación Triunfo. Operación Triunfo. Operation Triumph. It's very, very strange. <laughs> um, exactly. So a, a really great victory, a really great win. Um, demolition is the word I liked uh, in this article. The demolition of... Demoledor. Yeah. Demolition. Una victoria. Demoledora. Demoledora, sí, sí, yeah. Sí, sí. So you could just say it was a demolition of Real Sociedad in this derby. 4-0 they won. And yes, they summoned the spirit of this great team, which was uh, very good. Uh, penultimate article, uh, Barcelona. I like this one. Um, Barcelona, 
cruise to cruise, victory. Like Tom Cruise. Like Tom Cruise, yeah. Or uh, Crucero. Is Crucero? It? Yeah. Tom Crucero. What are, you, what are you doing when you're on a cruise? Relaxing. Aren't yeah, you? of course. So have you cruised to victory? Sí, como un, una victoria mm, plácida. Fácil. Muy fácil. Muy fácil. Yeah. They cruise to victory. It just means they're like, ah, easy, you know? Easy, 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 easy victory. So that Barcelona cruise to victory eh, at Valencia. Okay. Interesting, they say at Valencia. That means eh, en el estadio mm -hmm. del Valencia. Yeah. So at Valencia, we're playing at Valencia at next Valencia. week. Si yeah. quieres decir, por ejemplo, que fuera contra el Valencia, sería against Valencia. Against Valencia, yeah, exactly. Pero if si just... dices at, se está, estás informando de que el partido era en Valencia. That's it. If you say against Valencia, you don't know where it was. Mm -hmm. But if you say at Valencia, it means it was in the Mestalla. So they cruised to victory uh, at Valencia. Valencia. Yeah, so 4-1 away from home and very easy. We get that from the word cruise. And the very last one, um, oh, this is a really interesting one. Juventus held by Villarreal despite uh, the the goal, I can't even pronounce that, uh, Vla Vlachevich, <laughs> despite Vlachevich's early Champions League goal. So, mm -hmm. a pesar de, despite. A pesar. Um, this is a difficult grammar point and we don't have too long left, so it may be difficult to explain, but uh, you'll have heard despite and, ape, uh, and in spite of before for a pesar de. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful because we only use that if it's followed by a noun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, a pesar de la lluvia, despite the rain, or in spite of the rain, salimos. In spite of the rain, we left, uh, we went out. Yeah, or despite the rain, we went out. And you didn't have to say despite of? No. You did not need no, to say no, no. of in this case? Yeah, so despite the rain and in spite of, you uh, say. Okay. So it's very difficult, but only with nouns. If you want to use a verb, you have to say although, aunque. Although. Although. So for example, although it was raining, aunque estaba lloviendo, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the idea. We went out. That's mm. the idea. So okay. although plus verb and in spite of or despite plus the noun. That's very important. Here it's a noun, obviously, because we're talking about a goal. A goal is, is a noun. So uh, Juventus held by Villarreal despite, uh, the, uh, despite their early goal. Um, and uh, to be held by a team means that you, you couldn't beat them, basically. Uh, they were held to a 1-1 one -one draw. Yeah, it means mm -hmm. that they were, I don't know, limited yeah, it's one one apiece. Yeah, I'd probably say one apiece, very good. So they were limited to a one one draw. Uh, what else do I like this? Yes, if a match ends all square, to end all square. Es como terminar todo el cuadrado. Yeah, square is cuadrado. Mm -hmm. It just means easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an easy, easy draw, sorry. Yeah, easy. Like, it was a draw. It, it was, was a draw. draw. Yeah, it was a draw. So to be to end all square. Uh, and despite and although, I'll make sure to talk about that next week because it's a very interesting uh, grammar point. So well done to Real, well done to Barca, well done to Athletic Club, and well done to Tottenham Hotspur. And also keep watching the Premier League because it's now very interesting. There's yeah, not because too much Liverpool won six nil. Yeah, and now Liverpool is it, it depends on himself. Yeah, they depend on themselves. Yeah, mm. they depend on themselves because they're in very good form at the moment. So, yes, very exciting times for the Premier League at the top. Now, we don't have too much time left, so it's time to end the programme, as always, by giving you the clues, the pistas, the clues for mm -hmm. next week's Mystery Player. Yes. Mystery Player. Okay, Ruben. My water is very warm. Yes, warm. <laughs> yeah, I've been drinking this water and I think it's been lying in the studio for a while and it's a little bit uh, yeah. warm. Tem yeah, was... Or you could say uh, templada, no? Like lukewarm. Yeah. You could say lukewarm. Lukewarm. You say. So. Lukewarm, yeah. It's not very nice, but well, I, I need to bring my own <laughs> next time. Anyway, enough about my water. Uh, clue number one. Clue number one, because we're going to talk about a mystery player very, very special. Oh. Um, he has the best goal scoring rate in La Liga history. Ahead of Ronaldo and Messi. Very good. So goal scoring rate is the promedio de goles. Sí. The goal scoring rate. Now it's not the most goals, it's the promedio de goles. So the goal scoring rate. Tiene mejor rate. promedio que Messi que Ronaldo. That's it. Yeah. Uf. Yeah. And he's quite far ahead of Messi and Ronaldo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, por delante de. Ahead of. He's quite far ahead of Messi and Ronaldo. Really incredible scoring rate. So the best goal scoring rate in La Liga history ahead of Ronaldo and Messi. Clue number two. He played in Spain. Mexico and Argentina. How? Interesting career. And we can say that the player is from Spain, 
Mexico or Argentina? We're not going to specify because we're very bad. He's worse than me, as you saw with that Ecuadorian <laughs> example earlier. But uh, we, I'm not much better, to be honest. I'm a bad guy too. So he played in Spain, Mexico and Argentina. And we're not going to tell you which country he came from. Uh, quote number three. In Spain, um, he only played in one team that's no longer in La Liga. O sea, they are no longer in the first division. That's it. Nat yes. Nacho's face is very funny at the moment. He's like, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> He's freaking out. He's freaking out. Very He's good. freaking out. He's freaking oh out. Oh my God, what is it? That's it. Okay, so he only played in one team and this team is no longer, ya no juega, no longer in La Liga. Quote number four, he was the top scorer three times in Spain. He was the top scorer twice in Mexico and once in Argentina for the league. Okay, mm -hmm. so he was a top scorer three times in Spain, twice in Mexico, and once in Seis Argentina. Seis veces máximo goleador. Incredible. Incredible scoring record. But as we see, I mean, this guy was un crack. He was a legend. a legend. He was amazing. He was a really, really good player. But perhaps the time is a problem for someone. Clue number five. Clue number five. I am going to show the picture for Twitch people. Mm -hmm. He played in the 1934 World Cup. Very good. He played in the 1934 World Cup. I don't know who that is that he's with. It looks a bit like uh, Oliver Hardy from uh, El Gordo y el Flaco. I don't really know. So, interesting one. We if you know. think If you think you know the answer, guys and girls, if you think you know the answer, write to us on Twitter at speak under slash football under slash and let us know who you think the mystery player is. Very difficult this week because Ruben is a very bad person, okay? So that's yeah. why it's so difficult. I'm a bad guy too. Don't worry, it's not just him. <laughs> uh, if you join us on Twitch, thank you. Thank you to everybody that was writing into us on the messages. Sorry if we weren't able to answer to all of your questions. We'll try again next week. Uh, if you join us on the radio, thank you very much as well. Stick around to hear Richard Bulgan on La Hora Extra in a few minutes. Thank you for joining us, as always, and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.